Recipes for Technical Trading Success in Cook's Kitchen. Hey everybody, welcome back to Cook's Kitchen. Today we're talking EVs, and I brought in my colleague Brian Bolin because he did a great presentation for our inside team of strategists last week on the whole EV space. And you know, he he's first of all, Brian is a longtime investor in Tesla. He's been a Tesla bull since the IPO. He's made a fortune for his followers in just buying and holding Tesla. Uh, but he also looks at the competition because he wants to evaluate, you know, who are the up and comers and what are they going to do? So he's going to break it down for us uh, as best he can. And he did it. He has an hour long presentation, but we're going to try and condense it down to under 15 minutes. All right, Brian, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Kevin. And uh, it was the most painful hour of your life. <laughs> no. uh, so um, w some of these new players surprised me. Uh, we've heard about Rivian. Amaz they got the big deal from Amazon. Uh, but then there's this new truck that has four motors, one for each wheel. Can you show us uh, some of these new players in that, in that one? Yeah, let, let me uh, jump in and, and share my screen here and, and see if I can't uh, make this happen uh, and, and get us uh, to this. You know, I think the, uh, so the Rivian, um, how am I getting back? So the Rivian car, uh, or Lordstown Motors is the um, company that we're talking about, and it's the endurance uh, truck, and it has four in-wheel hub motors. Now, the, the important thing about this is that it's gonna allow the truck to do uh, so much more and, and be so much more efficient than, you know, your standard construction of a standard, you know, internal con combustion engine type car, which is gonna have that engine in the front and then, you know, axles to just kind of drive the wheels. The four, you know, motors for this is going to allow for much better fuel efficiency, really, you know, so so better range for this as well. And then it's going to give it, you know, better balance on the road. Uh, and, and I'm sure there's a lot of other features that you're, you're just not really going to understand unless you're driving in a bumpy situation or an off-road style thing where, you know, this this tire is going to be off the road for a little bit here or there, you know, that sort of thing where you're maybe going through a, a deep hole. But, you know, just the idea that this is a brand new way of constructing a vehicle is something that's really important. Yeah, this is this is some cool engineering, and I hope they make it only because so the technology gets some more R and D and some more use. Uh, my first thought is it just increases complexity, and with a with a car's drivetrain, you don't really want to increase complexity because you increase the potential for problems. But this could be a cool innovation for the reasons you talked about. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I th all these cars have got great innovations in them, right? And, uh, you know, we've talked a little bit about the, the Ford F-150 Lightning and all the things that it can do. Uh, you know, obviously the Tesla cars have the full self-driving capability, uh, you know, autopilot, things like that. I think a lot of cars have the seemingly autopilot type stuff, lane assist and, you know, lane changing capabilities. And some even have, you know, the, the parking capabilities, so they'll self-park for you. Uh, but as we go forward, because these cars are all being started from scratch and built from scratch, there's obviously the more complexity, but then there's also the opportunity, uh, you know, for new uh, features, for new things that that are going to, you know, that just weren't really thought of uh, in the past and, you know, couldn't be engineered into an internal, you know, the, the, the normal internal combustion engine car. All right. So this is uh, this endurance truck is from Lordstown, right? Right. Who are some of the other players we should be paying attention to here? You know, obviously there, there is, um, uh, you know, and this is the endurance and this is the, the, the price range here for, for these uh, for these trucks, you know, starting at 52.5, uh, going up to 65. But that's also you're also going to get that seventy five hundred dollar tax credit, which is really yeah. going to help a lot of those. Um, you know, if we look at the other one, there's the there's the Rivian truck, which is, you know, starting around. 67.5, obviously right down to that 60,000 range. And, and we just got news from them that they are uh, they have produced uh, a little over 1,000, delivered a little over 1,000 cars in the most recent quarter, uh, produced a little bit over 2,000. So uh, still in transit for a lot more. Uh, the Ford F-150, 
you know, and then there's also going to be, you know, th there's going to be a Hummer. There's going to be uh, the, the Faraday car. There's going to be a, a few others. But for the most part, it's going to be focused in on trucks because at the end of the day, trucks uh, outsell cars three to one. Uh, so that's the big market. So they're, they're, these these names are all going after what is the big market. I'm really surprised by the starting price on that Rivian. Um, that seems so expensive. And uh, my followers know I'm a big fan of the Ford F-150 Lightning uh, because it starts at you know 39, 40 thousand like the Cybertruck, uh, but it's just got a ton of features. And and most people aren't going to drive it out of the lot for 40k. They're going to want to add some of the bells and whistles and the high, the bigger motor, higher range, and probably get out of there for you know 55, 60. Uh, but still, 55, 60 is I think you get a better truck from Ford. Because that thing's an amazing, uh, you know, uh, they call it connected intelligence for all they're doing with it. Um, I just think that's a better vehicle than Rivian. But, uh, you know, there's the market. Yeah, and we've hey. seen a lot of the of the Ford F-150 Lightning. You know, they've done so much more marketing around that. You know, we, we've seen all the features of it where it can power your house in an, in an outage. Yeah. It's got all those outlets. It's really designed for the working professional uh, tradesman that that needs not only the pickup space, the power of the car, uh, but also has all the all the you know the capabilities of of all the you know the jacks for running all your power tools and everything else too. Yeah, great point. That's that's been my thesis about why the Lightning will catch on because if we just if you get a small percentage of contractors and fleets using it, so so real working people uh, validating the platform then the average consumer is going to be, oh, hey, that looks just like the F-150, but I can get the EV. Hey, I'm looking right. at your, um, you also wrote just this week, you did the Zach's Confidential Report, where you sort of summarized your research. And um, one thing that stood out, oh, I want to go to Tesla, because you said Tesla basically rebuilt the model of production. Um, and so what do you mean by that? Right. I think, you know, that was really highlighted uh, when the short sellers were, were just attacking Tesla for anything and everything they did. Uh, just because Tesla did something, it was therefore wrong. Uh, they talked about, you know, and this was, a, you know, a, bit, a reporter from Business Insider who, you know, has no experience in building a car, you know, more probably even less in, in driving a car. <laughs> uh, but, right. but you know, talked about how Ford and GM and the major manufacturers, when their their production line was basically a square, so that it would be aligned to a little bit one way, then make a ninety degree uh, turn, and then you know another ninety degree turn, and that was that was the way that they were able to do it because they brought everything to the production line, right? You know, Elon Musk, you know, making a straight production line where the, the the car just kept on rolling straight down and there was no turn. That was just classified as as you know witchcraft and heresy. How could you do something <laughs> that is not accepted by the big three? They're just they're the ones. They know cars. You know, that sort of stuff turns out to be more than just a little bit better, right? It you know, when you think about having one place that they basically built most of those Model 3s and not until a long, you know, not for quite a while uh, did they, you know, have the Gigafactory in, in Nevada. You know, one place was building these cars. You know, Ford, GM have, have dozens of plants all over the place. Um, you know, at the end of the day, continuously fine-tuning how they make the cars was really the important aspect of how Tesla kept getting better at doing something they've never done before. Right. And I think that's the important thing. Yeah. In um, in your presentation last week, you uh, we you acknowledged that Ford had 200,000 orders for the lightning. And, uh, you know, that's cool. Um, I, uh, I pointed out that that Ford also did something cool where they want to confirm the reservations and, and not just confirm them, but allow people to activate their reservation. And so that I was a little bit nervous because I own the stock. And I was, we were up like 80% in the stock. And I thought, oh my God, they're gonna, they're gonna let people activate. What if the numbers are low? Like what if people put in their you know, 100 or 300 bucks for the reservation and they don't activate? That, so I was really worried about that. So I took some profits. But what Ford did was kind of cool. They, they almost created a lottery system 
where not everybody could activate at once, you got picked. So it sort of it sort of created this reverse FOMO, like, oh, I didn't get picked. You know, of course I'm, you know, I can't wait until I get to activate my reservation. Uh, but talk about um, Tesla's reservations for the Cybertruck and what you think is significant there. Yeah, I, you know, I've got the screen up here that shows the uh, the reservations. So 200,000 for the F-150, 100,000 for the uh, Endurance from Lordstown Motors, and the ticker is RIDE, R-I-D-E. And then seventy thousand for Rivian on their truck, the the R one T or R T one, whatever it is. Uh, but there's also the Rivian, uh, you know, the the vans that Amazon has ordered. But you know, we, we think about these numbers. These are these are pretty big numbers for cars that they've never made before and don't, you know, F one Ford obviously has an understanding of how to make a car. But you know, Lordstown was 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 making those, uh, I think those uh, GM cars or Chevy cars for a while. Uh, but then the, the plant went under. So, the, I mean, they do have some experience there, but the, but not that much. But when we're talking about the demand, you know, that, that's the real thing here. Um, I, I saw that there was a, a report where there's three million orders for the Cybertruck. And, and that's just, you know, kind of an unbelievable number to me. Even if they could make 500,000 trucks a year, that would take six years to fill right. that initial demand. <laughs> But you know the reality is closer to 1.3 million. But still, you know it, when you're talking about something like that, it, it is are you three years out even once they start making these trucks? Uh, you know, are you are you that far out? Because you know once a few of these come in, th there's probably going to be that real that aha uh -huh moment. Like you know what, I do want this thing, and then the demand kind of moves up again for for something like this. But you know, obviously when we're talking about this this backlog. You know, that, that's the one thing that's really important to think about how to look at these stocks too, right? It, it, when the backlog is this big, there is future sales more or less guaranteed. You know, even if it's, you know, 75% of that backlog is coming in, you know that, the, that at least that much is really going to be sold. And will, do we expect the companies to update on the backlog every quarter? Yeah, definitely. I mean, that, 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 that is key to how we think about the stock. You know, when, when we when we talk about, you know, uh, uh, the microchip sector, you know, uh, the semiconductors, they always talk about their book to bill and, and you know, what kind of backlog they have there. Uh, so I fully expect that that will be a key part of all the presentations going forward for all those stocks. Yeah. And so that gives Wall Street analysts some visibility so they can model expected revenues. Right. And, you know, we talked about the, the you know, the, the idea of a the supply chain and, and the difficulties inside of that, right? So with the supply chain and just-in-time inventory is broken, uh, it's going to be that much more difficult, and you're going to probably see some very wide ranges on the probability, you know, on the, on the expectations. Are they going to deliver 5,000 to 20,000 vehicles? You know, they're they're not sure because at the end of the day, on the supply chain, you're only, uh, you know, you're the, uh, you know, on the production line, you're only going to move the production line as fast as your slowest supplier. Uh, you can't make these trucks without all the parts, and you're going to be stuck until you have all the parts that you need. Uh, so the just-in-time inventory, you know, system, you know, worked well in the past, but for these new trucks and these, you know, this new paradigm that we're in, uh, it, it's probably going to be a lot more difficult. Well, you just made me think of a great point about uh, when you're talking about, um, uh, you know, this variability in, you know, how many are they going to actually produce? We went through that with Tesla, right? There was the, it was every quarter, it was like, you know, is Tesla going to hit their numbers? And of course, that would, that would move the stock. But finally, Tesla seems to have hit this critical mass in, in their business and production that, it, you know, there's much more predictability and reliability. And, so they seem to be the winner, right? Right. And, and you know, th that's certainly going to be the thing looking forward. Uh, they know how to do this. They've been doing this for a while. There's also the security idea around uh, the Tesla supercharger network. Uh, the question is really going to be how can these other cars, you know, have something similar out there to charge? There's a lot of charging companies and there's a lot of other things, but but it's very decentralized, right? It's not like the every 50 miles on every major highway, uh, there's a supercharger. So you're, 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 the range anxiety for these other models is probably going to be out there for quite a while. Yeah. 
In your uh, Zach's Confidential report, you also talked about demand as the driver, uh, pun intended. And, uh, you know, just like, you know, your concept of success in any industry is about the, the end demand. Clearly, that's another case where Tesla has reached some critical mass. So what is your view of these smaller guys who are going to have uh, production? Are they going to have challenges with scaling production? They're going to have uncertain demand. They're not going to be able to invest in a charging network like Tesla. Um, their odds start to look slim in being able to survive in what's a really hard business, right? The automotive business. Yeah, and and I think there, there, there's a there's a big slide that kind of highlights that idea. You know, that there there's a lot of smaller ones outside of you know uh, Lordstown Motors or, or Rivian or you know like someone like Faraday where where they're talking about um, or Lucid. You know, the, the, that's another name where you know they're talking about you know having all these cars. But the idea is that the shorts are really out there already. They're already watching this and, and taking you know close look at this. Obviously, we, we know the short squeeze story inside of Tesla. Uh, the question is, you know, how how eager are these shorts for these things? Um, ride, uh, Lordstown Motors has a 24% short interest uh, and their endurance truck launches in the third quarter of this year. So if they can execute and they can withstand you know, probably six to nine months of of all the negativity that's going to come from the short sellers uh, and, and execute on the business plan. You could see a wonderful short squeeze in shares of ride, especially considering that the, the share price is so low. It's going to offer so many more possibilities for, you know, the retail investor that, you know, was looking at Tesla as that stock went up to two hundred dollars plus, you know, early on. Uh, they didn't really want to get too involved in it, uh, but something that's only you know a few dollars, you know, the, I think the lottery ticket aspect for a lot of retail investors is going to you know be a, at play here. But you know, at the end of the day, I think names like Lucid Motors, uh, even the, the the Neo out in China, and you know Faraday and a, and a few others are going to have a very difficult time. Okay, that's good to know. Uh, investors should really think about that and do some due diligence and. And know what they're betting on. You know, I almost missed that the that uh, ride is Lordstown, right? Yes. Yeah, I almost missed that. That's twenty four percent short interest because I it, the number looks small because I didn't see a decimal. But yeah, that's that's pretty chunky. Yeah, you know, back in the day, Tesla had uh, thirty eight percent, forty percent short did it interest. Did get that high? I did not it know was, that. Yeah, wow. It was it was at that time that that uh, Musk came out and said that it was the most shorted stock in the history of stocks. Yeah, and uh, I saw you You have a slide there, a picture of Chanos on CNBC. And here's a guy, smart guy, well-spoken, does his homework, and just completely wrong on Tesla, yeah. right? And, and has been wrong for years on it and continues to, you know, increase <laughs> the bet in hopes of uh, of getting back out of it, you know. And, and it's not just him, as we explained, you know, I did on, on that, that other thing. There's a lot of shorts that were in this and – and basically got wiped out. You know, Einhorn, uh, David Einhorn from Greenlight was short. Uh, maybe, maybe even still is. Um, you know, the valuation for Tesla is sky high. There's no doubt about it. But you know, you have to figure that all the energy and all the things that they they threw at Tesla, you know, that they're going to throw the similar stuff at these other smaller names. And it's you know, will they have the ability to withstand that sort of uh, onslaught? Gotcha. Okay, we got to wrap it up here, but I want to see if you have any more cool slides to show us or you want to talk about batteries, because I know you wrote a little bit about price points and batteries. Um, yeah, you know, the, the batteries, well, we were talking really about the batteries here. It's just the range. And, and you know, are, are you driving your truck, you know, 100 miles uh, each day, each way? Uh, you know, there's miles that are put on cars, but, you know, there's always that concern. It, as we look forward, uh, to these cars, you know, hitting the market, there's going to be all that demand for really lithium. Uh, that that's one idea to keep out there. Uh, there is only so much of that right now, and as we think about batteries and the supply chain for how these things are are going to evolve, that that's definitely you know that in the back of your mind. Think about the you know the actual raw materials for this. I know um, the the president that had the Defense Production Act kind of try to secure some of these uh, materials and minerals for batteries. But, uh, 
it's still going to be a tall order, especially if you're talking about producing millions of EVs. Yeah. So, yeah, we have this uh, this commodity that's part of the supply chain, this expensive commodity. <laughs> right. Um, so and oh, you, you show you talked about range. So I want to mention uh, uh, Ford again. Yeah. The contractor who may only have to travel 200 miles a day, you know, which is pretty far if he has to drive, you know, across a city to, to a job and then drive home, he can handle that. But he's not going to take it on vacation where he has to drive more than 300 miles unless he's assured he's got charging. Um, but Ford is building a network. Ford is probably building the only charging network that would will be comparable to what Tesla has. But another cool thing I like about the Lightning is that um, you've got the software integrated, like you know, you've got like this iPad right right in the, on the console there, where it's tracking what's the load in the pickup bed, and are you towing, and then calculates your range against you know your battery storage with in real time. So uh, I think that's a pretty cool thing to have so, so that people, uh, you know, for a contractor who could have different uh, weight loads any given day or week, you know, with stuff, you know, stuff in the bed or hauling something. Right, all different new features coming on all these uh, electric vehicles and certainly stuff to, uh, to keep your eye on. Uh, full disclosure, I am a Ford shareholder, so uh, <laughs> not pumping it there too much. But so so just check it out yourself. You know, don't buy Ford because I say buy Ford, although that uh, digital self uh, tow hitch is pretty cool. <laughs> right. All yeah, right, Brian. Thanks. Sure I, I do own uh, shares of Tesla. Yes. Yes. And uh, yeah. And uh, kudos to you for uh, keeping your people in that. It's been a it's been a wealth builder for your followers, for sure. So that's uh, any. Uh, you're the opposite of Jim Chanos. Well, Jim Chanos is dying on his sword. You're making people rich, uh, holding on to their Tesla. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm the I'm the exact opposite of Jim Chanos. He is very rich. <laughs> <laughs> well said. Well said. All right. Um, thanks for joining us, Brian. Uh, by the way, this uh, airplane behind me. This is my one of my dad's uh, sport aerobatic planes. It's called a, a Sorel Hyperbipe. Very unusual sport aerobatic plane. With uh, where the where the whole fuselage is shaped like an airfoil, so that gave it extra lift, and the and the sides are flat, so and it's got a souped up motor. Uh, my brother flew aerobatics in it too. Uh, my dad just passed away a year ago this month, so I'm uh, I'm giving a shout out to him again. <laughs> sorry, sorry for your loss, and I, and yeah. I want to see you fly that plane down to Florida to come visit me. I yeah, I got to I got to see if I can get my medical back. All right, Brian, thanks so much for uh, coming on Cook's Kitchen and talking all things EV. Thank you. We'll talk to you soon, brother.